They say plants like music. Yeah, no, like really, they, they respond to the vibrations of it, which means that this playlist you're listening to, the plants are too. You know what else plants like? Organic soil from miracle Grow. It's made with all the best stuff like wood fiber and compost. Plus, it's Omri certified organic, which officially means it's made with superior ingredients. And when you give your plants the stuff that makes them happy, they won't judge you on your iffy playlist. Hear that, plants? So go ahead and give them miracle Grow. This episode of the d Podcast is brought to you by Goalie Nutrition. As someone who's used Goalie for quite some time, I can tell you that they're not only very good, but they're very beneficial. My favorite are the Super Green Gummies. The Super Green Gummies are uniquely crafted with a spectrum of essential nutrients such as vitamins A, B12, folic acid, and theamine. It supports a healthy liver function, healthy nervous and immune system, digestive health, a boost to your metabolism, and overall health and well-being. There are no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or colors from artificial sources. They're vegan-friendly, gluten-free, and gelatin-free. All loyal listeners of the d podcast get a special 10% discount at checkout. Go to Goalie.com, use promo code D-L-E-W. That's Goalie.com, use promo code D-L-E-W. This podcast is a Luciete production. Welcome to another edition of the d Loop Podcast. I'm your host, Derek T. Lewis, and I want to first and foremost thank all of you that tuned in the last week's episode, the relaunch episode with my interview with Chrissy Monroe. The feedback has been nothing but positive vibes from, from everyone that reached out to me privately, publicly. So again, thank you all for supporting the movement. And again, it, we're on, nowhere to go but up, right? Exactly. So I want to thank Chrissy as well, once again, for... Um, really giving my show a shot. She didn't have to do it, but she did it anyway. So thank you, Chrissy, and uh, we'll definitely be talking soon. But regarding my crazy weekend, of course, you know, I had my event at Monster Factory Pro Wrestling where I do my ring announcing thing. And top to bottom, it was a great show. You know, great energy from, you know, all the wrestlers, all the guys and gals, you know, in the back, you know, kudos to them. And, you know, the fans really brought it as well. But right after that, I had to go to a studio session. I literally had to drive about two hours up to Brooklyn from South Jersey to do a studio session for my my next record. I'm actually working on new music. And when I tell you all that this record is going to be insane, I cannot wait for all of you to hear what I have in store for all of you musically. And that's going to be coming right now in the late part of the spring to kick off the summer. So um, stay tuned for that. But this past Monday, I went to Philly at the Wells Fargo Center to see WWE's Monday Night Raw, the 30th anniversary episode of Monday Night Raw. Definitely wanted to be in the house. I still remember the first episode of Raw, January 11th, 1993. It was a new concept for, was it seven years? Eight years, it was primetime wrestling in that same time slot. And Vince McMahon had the vision to take it live. And it, um, it took place at the Manhattan Center right in New York City, every week. I think they did it for a year. And then, of course, with the logistics involved with travel, you know, they end up doing it from different locations across the country. It will be live one week, taped the other week. Then, of course, the Monday Night War calls WWE to say, we're going to do Raw Live every week. So that's that's where that comes in. And it's the longest, the longest running episodic television show in history. 30 years. Unbelievable. So kudos to the WWE on a job well done. Um, at, at an amazing show. I had a great time. Got to catch up with some friends. Obsessed with my boy Ben Beck. Shout out to Ben Beck. He's um He's been in my corner since day one when I got in this crazy uh, podcasting business many, many years ago. But speaking of WWE, this episode I have the owner of Wrestling Inc., Raj Geary, on the show. and We actually talk about really the last nine months in the world of the WWE with... Obviously, Stephanie McMahon really taking a leave of absence at first last May. Then the Wall Street Journal report regarding Vince McMahon and some goings-on that was happening. And then that involved the board of directors, which led to Vince ultimately retiring. 
but he still owns 81% of the, the shares of the company. Then there's this new regime change. Then all of a sudden, Vince McMahon wants to come back. Then Stephanie actually resigns, period. Then Vince McMahon is now back as the chairman of the board for WWE. Not the CEO, but the chairman of the board. And Raj really goes into detail regarding everything that happened, you know, with the, the whole entire timeline that we're going to talk about. So let's not wait any longer. My interview with Raj Gary starts right now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and privilege for me to have this individual on the show. He is the owner of uh, WrestlingInc.com, the one and only Raj Gary. Thank you so much for coming to the DLU podcast. How are you, man? Good, man. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for asking. I mean, this is uh, week number two for me, you know, with this show. And uh, it, like I said, when you agreed to come on to talk about the topic, you know, I was like, okay, let's do it. So obviously in, in case, you know, anyone in the wrestling space hasn't heard, or if you want to, if you want to get further clarity, you know, last Monday, um, there was a tweet or I guess a message on social media from WWE co-CEO Stephanie McMahon that she was resigning immediately from the WWE. And then there was, you know, rumor that, you know, Vince McMahon was going to be, you know, back on the board of directors for WWE. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that, obviously, as we go through this timeline, but I want to talk about going back to May of 2022 when Stephanie had initially announced that she was taking a leave of absence what led to that initially? Well, I mean, she never totally came out and said, but it was something that she had been considering for a while. Um, she, from all accounts, she just wanted to spend more time with her family. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Paul Triple H Levesque, he had that, uh, the heart attack uh, yeah. months earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think it was just stepping back, taking some time off. And, um, yeah, she never, you know, it, it, in May of last year, she never resigned. She was just taking a leave of absence. She kept her position on the board. So, you know, that's kind of different from this time because this time she officially resigned, like she's gone, gone, and she's also resigned from the board. So she's no longer on the board. So, um, yeah, it's a different, different circumstance this time. For sure. And I mean, because right after that, maybe like a month and a half after that, there was the Wall Street Journal report that Vince McMahon there was you know allegations of you know the misappropriate usage of corporate funds you know in regards to NDA settlement agreements so it was just the timing of it was just like really really odd because I'm just like wait a minute she just took a leave of absence and then this news happens right. and I'm just like my god so what was it the board of directors initially that you know went in on in with this in regards to you know hey we're reporting, you know, funds to our, you know, to our shareholders, and now there's misappropriate uses of funds. So, was it the Wall Street Journal that inquired about it, or was it the board of directors that said, "Hey, we're going to go ahead and report this"? Uh, well, clearly, someone from the board leaked, you know, a lot of this info. You know, the the investigation. So the investigation was already underway, and it got leaked to the Wall Street Journal, and, and you know, everything that the journal has reported for. You know, for the most part, has been 100% accurate. I think. Right. Uh, you know, they mentioned that. You know, even when they mentioned that Vince wanted to come back to the company, uh, the way the only thing that was different was they had said like he was wanting to come back, basically back in his former role, and that didn't end up happening. But I don't think they were incorrect on that. I think Vince did want to come back in his former role, and this was almost like a way to kind of, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, mutually uh, find an, find some, uh, you know, uh, find a balance, basically. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's uh, clearly someone leaked something to the Wall Street Journal um, and, you know, ultimately led to Vince retiring. And you know, months later, he's back. It's it's just been the craziest story. Sure. It, yeah, because initially he was going to take a leave of absence. It was going to be something temporary. And then they bring Stephanie right. back to fill to basically temporarily fill in while he was, you know, dealing with this particular matter. I mean, this was this is huge. When you're dealing with, you know, your publicly traded company and there's stockholders and there's, you know, the shareholders and there's 
the public perception of the, I guess the I guess the allegations of what was going on with, and you know, I don't know whether it was inappropriate or whatever. It was a consensual relationship, but the fact of you know using for you know using funds to settle, but then also too, over the last what two years since twenty twenty, the reason that talents were let go, they were told it was budget cuts. You know what I mean? Right. So if if I'm a former talent and I'm hearing all these things that are going like, well, wait a minute, like. I'm, they said it's budget cuts, but yet millions of dollars are being are being paid out to said individuals. You know what I mean? And, and again, this is not coming down on anybody in regard. I think that's just a messed up situation. You know, with you know with, with women involved and everything. Like that's just just a whole other story. But if you're right. a talent hearing this, and you're like, well, wait, like I didn't do anything wrong, but then I'm being let go because of you know, budget cuts, but then you find out two years later of all of this, was there any word that you heard, obviously, because you run a very reputable um, wrestling website, was there any, I guess, thoughts from like t- previous talents that were let go, that they were frustrated hearing this news, knowing the fact that bu- they were told budget cuts, but then they heard this? Well, it, you know, the one thing with, with budget cuts is budget cuts doesn't mean that you're you need to you're financially hurting so you need to let people go it's it's mm-hmm. just you know every company does you know where you're periodically you know cleaning house basically and you know cutting talent that aren't going to be used or haven't been used or well for whatever reason you know uh cutting talent cutting staff you know just again streamline you know streamlining the company so um and most of and again the SEC is investigating the the payments from Vince i think Oh, gosh, I'm I'm forgetting right now. I think most of them were paid personally, but um, by Vince, not not using company company funds. funds but, right, right, right. But I'll have you know I I'll have to double check that because I I can I think there might have been there was something that there was something where he used company funds and he paid it back, and you know they had to up you know update their books. But I I can't remember if it was just one payment. Uh, that was using company funds or not, but um, and definitely, you know, the the lady who he had the affair with that um, that led to this everything coming out. <clears throat> mm-hmm. He was offering her a raise, um, and that you know, I think she was making one hundred fifty thousand. He was going to bump it up to three hundred thousand. Wow! It, it, in WWE amounts, that's that's a you know a, a drop in the bucket but still that's highly unethical that's you know very illegal so right. um that investigation remains ongoing with the sec that is an ongoing wow so it's it's crazy even what's what we what we found out last monday and again we're just going to go through the whole timeline so i think maybe a week before SummerSlam, it was a it was a it was on a friday after the um after the new york stock exchange had closed for the weekend Vince had announced his retirement. He was at, at 77. You know, it was time to retire. Thank you, WWE Universe. Then, now, forever together. And you and I both know, we we basically around the same um, age group. We never thought in a gazillion years that Vincent Kennedy McMahon would leave the, voluntarily. Would, would retire, <laughs> voluntarily leave the WWE. It, it would be a, a situation of like this man being 150 years old and then, you know, he would, you know what I mean? It, it, something like that, of those lines. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you get my point. I never right. thought that we would be in a, live in a time where Vince McMahon would, would ultimately leave the company voluntarily yeah. due to something like this. And, and voluntary, voluntarily, that's in quotes because he was pretty much kind of forced out uh and clearly he felt like it was premature how uh you know and, and that's why he came back if he, i think he regrets retiring he feels like he would have weathered that storm um yeah you know uh, i always thought um that when vince stepped down that mm-hmm. the stock would tank because you know investors when they think wwe uh, they think vince mcmahon and they right. you know, assume that He's gone, you know, he's he's as associated with the product as anyone, you know, as Rupert sure. Murdoch with Fox or uh, Steve Jobs was with Apple. Apple. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought the stock would uh, drop. And I, you know, you just don't know how 
uh, you know, new people would handle just the business end, you know, creatively, mm-hmm. I think Vince hasn't been at his peak in a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've said many, many times on the wrestling podcast that I think Vince is a genius for sure. But part of being a mm-hmm. genius is also knowing where you're weak and then put, you know, filling in those positions where you're weak and creatively he had gotten weak. You were seeing the same matches over and over, storylines that went nowhere, right. uh, bringing in talent. All of a sudden, they're disappearing. Um, <clears throat> and and just, you know, it was just a chaotic uh, booking and storytelling. And, you know, as soon as he left, it almost immediately changed. And the stock went up, I think, because people, you know, uh, investors thought a sale was going to be more likely now with Vince gone. Uh, the stock went up creatively. The shows had gotten much better. Um, Triple H, I think he's sh- he showed he's been showing that he can do long term storytelling. He's more into uh, not just starting something and dropping it a week later. You know, there's even with storylines that aren't, I wouldn't say uh, the most compelling. You know, for like sure is and Dexter Loomis, but he's still right. going with it. He's still making sure there's a a beginning a middle and an end which you weren't seeing before so you know i I, and the talent was much happier it had had just been such a rosy time since vince left uh, backstage right right. and uh, talent was happy the creative was better ratings were up uh ratings for the last two quarters uh were way up from the first two quarters the last year uh, they're doing record business WrestleMania already. It's broken the gate record, and yes, it is two nights uh, compared to one nights in the past. But still, it's it's mid January. Not a single match has been announced. We don't even know if The Rock is coming back or not for sure. So uh, they, they're doing monster business. Everything just seems so uh, happy, and then you know this happens, and yeah, you know, on the surface, it shouldn't make a difference creatively, but. The the one thing I think anyone that's followed Vince McMahon knows is that, uh, to use an old Sting line, is that uh, the the only thing the only thing that's for sure is that nothing's for sure. <laughs> right, and I mean, I, again, you know, there's a lot there's a lot to cover in regard. You cover some of it, but you know, with you know, we things you read, things you hear, you know, sometimes you take it with a grain of salt. But I mean, some of the reports that were coming out is that as far as the morale backstage was was in a far better light no one's really walking on eggshells or anything you know because that's ideally you want that type of work that work environment for everyone to enjoy what they're doing regardless of the vocation if it's pro wrestling if it's the if you're playing on an nfl team or if you're in corporate america whatever i mean if you're creating an inclusive work environment for people to be successful and feel empowered to do some some creative things that's going to make the overall product better you know but Again, going back to when Vince retired, then obviously Stephanie is initially, you know, she's brought back as and her along with Nick Khan as, you know, co-CEO. Triple H is now brought back into the fold and as far as a content create a content creative um officer. So I felt I felt the wave immediately at SummerSlam bringing some names back, you know, obviously Bailey coming back when well, she was already under contract, but seeing a Dakota Kai, you know what I mean, come back. Mm-hmm. And really starting to see some things you would have never saw that you would have never thought you would see under the Vince regime. You know, I remember seeing a Raw, and it was like, it wasn't even, it was before Raw, but they put it out on um on um WWE social media where Riddle and Rollins were they they had some type of scuffle on the top, top of a parking garage or something like that. And I'm like, that is so reminiscent of the 80s with mm-hmm. with Dusty Rhodes, you know, you know, booking the territory back then. So you were starting to see planting of the seeds of what's to come you know under the you know the triple h regime now you shed light on a little bit when when as far as redoing the far as the financial records were concerned as far as because there was unrecorded expenses going out was that pressure was that public pressure for the wwe to do that or the wwe say hey you know what let's just go out and do this now let's redo the financial reports from years prior so we can get this thing back on track yeah i mean i i I mean they had to do that i mean they had to you know uh, uh, appropriate the books and and take into account all you know all of that you know a publicly held company uh, they had to do that as far as everything with vince you know it's complicated but because he owns 81 percent of the voting power 
uh he can do what he wants and basically you're seeing that right now he can come in stack the board to you know be in his favor which he's basically done you he, he, he replaced three board members and now three have left you know two two others left the day he came back and the stephanie McMahon, you know now leaving so he, i don't know how if he's going to fill all those um seats or you know keep the board smaller i, I would assume he's going to fill those seats and he's going to fill it with people that uh, agree with him so he's already tipped the board He's got full power. I don't think he wants to, I don't think he would want to um, make any big management changes. Again, Stephanie stepping down, well, that was her call. But I don't think he wants to do that while there are talks of a sale going on. Because, you know, again, you don't want to have, you know, have potential buyers seeing the company and seeing it in chaos. You want you want it to be stable, showing that you're smooth. Smooth, yeah, exactly. You're, you're de delivering a consistent product that's popular. Uh, the, the numbers are still up, and uh, everything's a well-oiled machine. So, I, I think as long as they're looking uh, for a sale, um, that I would think. And again, anything can change, but mm -hmm. that Vince kind of stays out of creative for the most part. And there was again to your point. I know there were some uh, reports, you know, a few months, maybe a month or so back, that he, him leaving. He had taken some bad advice. Whoever mm -hmm. that, in, who whoever give gave him that advice, like no one knows who it is. But I mean, because again, I'm thinking you're Vince McMahon. You know, what I mean, who's going to tell Vince McMahon what to do? But at the same time, nothing of this magnitude, no one saw coming. I mean, think about what if social media was around back when the steroid trial happened. You know what I mean? Like would oh, like yeah. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Would he have taken a leave then? You know, or something something like that. Did, did you just, I thought about that because I remember when the steroid trial actually happened and I realized, oh, Vince is really the owner of the WWF because, you know, story, <laughs> you know, K, yeah. you know, kayfabe, it was, we all right. thought it was Jack he was, the announcer. he was just the <laughs> announcer guy, you know what I mean? He did Superstars of Wrestling and Saturday Night's Main Event and occasional pay-per-views. I'm like, wow, Vince McMahon is the, really the owner of the WWF. So it was almost like, is this bizarro world? You know what I mean? So coming back to now, this I was I think the date was December twentieth. He had written a letter to the board of directors in regards to coming back. What were the contents of that letter specifically in regards to what he wanted to do coming back to the WWE? Well, basically, that initial letter was he wanted to come back to where he was before, basically in charge of everything on the management side as well as returning to the board. Um, he was saying. And and you know what the thing is, he's probably right that right now is probably the perfect time for you know a sale, um, and and you know you're starting to see like Warner Brothers Discovery really cutting back on costs. Um, you're seeing all these people that were putting tons of money into streaming now uh, they're seeing that they're you know they're losing a lot of money and are having to make difficult decisions with with how to proceed. So. When things are really in flux with, you know, these companies and, and their budgets and how much they're willing to pay, mm -hmm. it is probably better to sell now as opposed to, you know, going farther down this road and, and you know, because in a year, if ad rates keep going down and everything, they're probably not going to spend as much. So in that sense, it definitely made, you know, made sense what he was saying. But then he's like, I will not approve any tv deal or any media rights deal unless i'm involved so basically completely hijacking uh the company in a lot of ways like either i come back on or you're not getting a tv renewal and that's uh you know that's crazy but that's vince and uh and uh you know a week later december 27th they basically wrote him back saying thanks but no thanks um you know, now, and that would include stephanie a uh, nick and triple h correct unanimous yeah it was unanimous the board voted that he doesn't come back and vince basically said screw that i'm coming back and and here we are this episode of the d Lou podcast is brought to you by goalie nutrition as someone who's used goalie for quite some time i can tell you that they're not only very good but they're very beneficial my favorite are the super green gummies the super green gummies are uniquely crafted with a spectrum of essential nutrients such as vitamins a b12 folic acid, and theamine. It supports a healthy liver function, healthy nervous and immune system, digestive health, a boost to your metabolism, and overall health and well-being. There are no artificial sweeteners, 
flavors or colors from artificial sources. They're vegan-friendly, gluten-free, and gelatin-free. All loyal listeners of the d podcast get a special 10% discount at checkout. Go to Goalie.com, use promo code D-L-E-W. That's Goalie.com, use promo code D-L-E-W. It was crazy to me because I'm thinking there's no way he's going to be back. But then when you really read the fine print of everything, him owning, was it 80 or 81% of the, um, of all the shares, you know, in the company, he has the right to do it. But I'm thinking, why would he say, in my mind, as a wrestling historian, as a, you know, as a, as a wrestling purist, why would you sell? Why wouldn't you keep it in the family? Is there a reason why he would not want to pass that down and make it a generational thing, such as his grandfather, then his father, then to him, then maybe to his kids, maybe to his grandkids? I think the money, you know, right now, WWE has a market cap of about $6.6 billion. So that's, you know, their kids, grandkids are set for life um, and their grandkids. So, right. I mean, it's, I mean, it's just an insane amount of money that they could get with the sale right now. So I think, I mean, that I think it comes down to just as simple as that. And, you know, it's also seemed over the years that Vince has kind of lost faith with, you know, his family members. He's even said that. He said that on Pat McAfee, that uh, he he wished you know, they would have performed better. You, you saw the, the, he basically gutted what Triple H did with NXT. Uh he, you know, Shane McMahon's no longer around. Um, Stephanie McMahon left last year for a while, and they kind of buried her in a uh, Business Insider story, you know, saying, like, it was his choice. Even though it was actually her choice, they made it sound like she wasn't performing well, and that was kind of the reason she was gone. So, you know, he, he never got the sense that he was fully on board with any of his uh, his family members taking over. I'm glad you said that because that, that was one question I definitely wanted to backtrack a little bit and ask you. I, I did read that report where he actually said some things about Stephanie. And I'm, I'm thinking, at first I thought it was a fake, you know, you know, report or whatever it is. But then it started to make its round. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why would he do it to his own daughter? You know, like <laughs> right. that, that was that was the first question I asked. You know, I thought even, oh, granted, you know, ne- we don't believe in nepotism, nepotism, whatever. But I'm like, that is your daughter. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so I'm thinking... She has a great, I mean, she was, was a chief brand officer was her title before mm-hmm. she had taken that leave of absence. And I'm thinking, well, clearly she's basically the face of the company when she's going out to these charities, going out to these different events, representing the company, you know, when she's making all these type of deals, you know, whatever it is, like she, like she is the face of it. I thought she was doing a great job, but who knows? And with mm-hmm. Vince, again, you, you never know, but, um, now you know he he he's back. Vince McMahon is officially back as the uh, chairman of the board, and that was a unanimous vote, correct? Uh, yes, yeah, that was unanimous. Uh, wow, vote, correct. So, so the day after Stephanie uh, stepped down, uh, he was elected chairman of the board again. Wow, that's that's incredible. So, where did the rumor and somewhat innuendo come into play about? Saudi Arabia because that had taken a life of its of its own. I was like, well, wait a minute. So WWE didn't even make any announcement. There was nothing. I'm like, where did this come from? Well, they are interested. They, they are one of the potential suitors uh, to buying the company. Exactly, you know, um, what led to a, the story coming out that it was a done deal and. Um, yeah, that was completed. I I can I can tell you. I, I I have no idea. Um, but there were a few different people that reported it. Um, in the wrestling media, well, right? Zone, and that was the part that really got me. Right. Yeah, and I'm assuming. I can't say this for sure. This is my speculation, but I'm assuming they all got it from the same person. Mm-hmm. Uh, whoever you know, uh, and I'm guessing that the person that gave it to him has been credible in the past and and you know had good info because you wouldn't just take a story like that from someone you you know with no credibility or or that you don't know so that's my guess i'm guessing that they didn't get multiple sources and but again i could be completely wrong but you know but a story like that you have to have multiple sources you have to you go to wwe 
And uh, look, when I when I saw it, because it was reported by, you know, a few different people who have broken big stories in the past, I thought it was true. And, um, you know, I, I made sure to note on Twitter that I couldn't confirm any of this. I, I was trying that night. Right. And, uh, that's what but, I saw from you at first. I'm just like, well, wait, I said, if Raj doesn't, if he can't confirm it, <laughs> then I'm just going to kind of just wait and see. Because I get right. in my mind, I'm like, there's no possible way they could say, I mean, again, especially with those that are in the WWE talent wise, you know what I mean? As far as right. like, it's some, you have, you have people, you have, I'll keep it. I'll put it out there. You have members of the LGBTQ community in WWE, you know what I mean? Right. And, and all these, so I'm just like, how, how on earth, how is this going to work if this sale does go through? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it was just, I mean, that you know what, you know, sometimes I'm just trying to be a dude on Twitter. I'm not, like, reporting. Right, um, right, right. And, uh, you know, it, it, stories like that I probably shouldn't even comment on or react to until there's, you know, confirmation from a WWE or, like, a, a big, uh, a, a big, because something like that, that's going to get out to the Wall Street Journal and CNBC. Oh, yeah. You know, so, yeah. Um, oh. But yeah, yeah. So it it turned out that wasn't true, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. And then the Saudis uh, buying WWE, that would turn it into they would make the company private. So obviously they'd have you know all the shareholders would get paid out paid out. And um, yeah, yeah, it would. I just don't know how that would work because you see they own you know Saudi is backing Live Golf. And Live Golf has yet to get a TV deal. And, right, uh, that was my ne- that was gonna be my next thing because I'm like, well, wait a minute, with all these rights, TV rights, um, things that are that are actually gonna expire. I think was it 2024? And right. I'm like, well, how are they gonna negotiate? Oh, I said that. I said that was gonna be ugly. You know what I mean? If if that was to, if that were to um to happen in my mind, I'm thinking, well, they already have an existing relationship with um NBC. You know, mm-hmm. for for over thirty years, you know, going back to Dick Ambersole when they were you know producing Saturday Night's Main Event and everything. So right. in my and just as me as a fan, this is, again nothing I heard, guys. But just as, as a fan and someone I've been watching the product for a very long time, I thought it was going to be, it could be NBC. But again, we never know. Right. I mean, WWE is so important to NBC right now. Um, mm-hmm. You remove the average, you know, like six hundred and something thousand in prime time on USA Network. Uh, mm-hmm. You take WWE out of that, and it's like four hundred fifty thousand. So, and, oh, and they wow. drop way down on on the rankings of, of the cable network. So, um, it's really important. Without they really don't have anything else on USA uh, without right. WWE. Um, you know, Chucky doesn't do near the ratings that uh, Raw or even NXT does. So, it's really important to them. And also, you know, just if everything stayed the same, uh, you know, like they're not adding additional programming, all. That would need to happen if a sale to Comcast happened was you move SmackDown to NBC. Everything else pretty much stays the same. So it'd be a really smooth move, basically. Um, but then you, when you look at other potential buyers, that that's where it gets interesting. You know, Disney, um, you know, what would right. they do with it? You know, uh, Nick Khan met with Bob Iger last week. And right. you know, Bob Iger is, you know, uh, he put back in charge of Disney last year. He's, yeah. he, he, you know, obviously... Uh, that's a big deal if, if you know, when, when, when they're meeting. So, um, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But, uh, yeah, move to Disney, that's obviously, that would be a whole different thing because then it's like, where does Raw go? Does it go to, you know, and Disney owns FX now. They bought FX and uh, a bunch of Fox properties from Fox uh, several years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, does Raw go to FX? Does SmackDown go to ABC? Um, you know, ABC on Friday nights, they have 2020, which is a staple. Do they move 2020 to 10, have SmackDown on earlier. You know, there's just a lot of uh, different moving parts. So, uh, and this, the network moved to ESPN plus, which is where I, I would guess it would go. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, those two make the most sense and it's more of a lateral move. Uh, you know, if, a, if Fox got in the game that then it gets trickier because then, you know, it would be raw moving to FS1, which, which doesn't, it's in as, you know, more actually technically more homes uh, than USA, but uh, just uh, it doesn't get the whenever wrestling's on there, it doesn't do well. Uh, look, it at look at backstage, look at backstage, look at backstage, like that right. would be 
bad, bad, bad time slot to begin with. You know what I mean? Right. Well, they do basically under a hundred. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, under a million viewers whenever they're on FS1. Um, and normally they're doing, you know, one and a half to two. So, and, and, and you know, even the week before Raw moved to Fox, they did over two million viewers on USA. Mm-hmm. And then a few weeks later, they were preempted one week to FS1. They did like 850,000. So it, it's yeah. it's a big difference uh, being on FS1. Now, whether they could train people to to find this, the station and get mm-hmm. used to watching it. But anytime Raw has moved, like when they moved to TNN and, and oh, God. back to USA, their average always dropped. Yeah. And I mean, and that's why, you know, now with with the with the help of social media, you see a lot of talent. Even in AEW, like any thing that they are, that you're using your talent to advertise, that's your job as a, as a talent too. You know, you have to promote the product. You know, as far as what's that, if there's any type of change with you know with with um with the time slot or another channel, or whatever the case, like hey, we're gonna be on FS1 Friday night eight o'clock. Make sure you you know. So I've I've seen talent actually do that. So now that Vince is back in the fold, and I know you mentioned um. There were three people that were let go, but he did bring back, um, you know, former um, was I think chief financial officer uh, Nick Barrios and Michelle Wilson, um, uh, George Barrios, yeah, George, George Barrios. Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Why were they initially let go to begin with? Because I thought they were again, it was it was out of the blue. I was very shocked that those two were let go, and ultimately, what led them to to be brought back? I think Vince wasn't happy with the direction they wanted to go with the network. And that was the the main reason they were let go initially. And now, um, yeah, I mean, basically brought back uh, because they are familiar with the product. They'll have his back. And um, I think that's that's about it. <laughs> that's, man, it's, 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 it's like, again, it's like hearing all this stuff. It's like, you cannot script this. Like, seriously, right. you can't. Yeah. Like, this is, a right. re- this is real. This is about as real as it gets. And you're thinking... This is something that should be happening in the ring, but it's not. It's legit <laughs> right. happening in, like, in real life. You know what I mean? But right. so so now that he's back, where and you know, obviously Royal Rumble's coming up, and of course, you know, WrestleMania. Does this have any implication either way as far as like how WrestleMania is going to perform, whether it's on Peacock or, or anything of it? Like will will now that he's fully back as far as chairman of the board, do you think how do you think this is all going to play out? Right now, um, it should have no effect. You know, Triple H is still in charge of creative. Nick Khan's the CEO. Vince, uh, I mean, you know, they had a talent meeting last week and basically said Vince isn't in charge creatively. They did kind of leave it open that we don't know if that'll change in the future. Um, So as of right now, it shouldn't have any effect. Um, And, you know, Vince's creative ideas would be that it'd be his suggestions but it's ultimately up to uh triple h well that's good to hear no and i I think like i said it it, it would be a huge disservice to the wwe if they were just to just forego with triple h because i think considering the leaps and bounds he's made in what six months you know what i mean right imagine where it's going to be in 18 months where everything is fully under his control on, on his watch and he's able to maneuver and facilitate all of his pieces in regards to talent and putting them in the right places that make the overall company successful. So I know you got to get out of here, man. Again, I want to thank you very much for coming on. Tell the people where they can find you on social media, website, and, and the whole nine yards. Yeah, you could uh, you could follow me on Twitter at uh, at the Raj Geary. Um, you can uh, myself and Jack Farmer. Uh, we do breaking news updates on the Wrestling Inc. Uh, YouTube channel. So subscribe to that. You know, uh, we we just did a, a video last. Uh, you know, recently about the the wholesale, uh, who's involved, you know, all the rumors about the, uh, the cons being involved. So, uh, boy, which I, I, I don't see that happening. No, no, uh, no, no. Uh, so definitely check that out. We, we actually also, uh, discuss, you know, some finance stuff on our uh, different YouTube channels called practical money, youtube.com slash at practical money. So yeah, check it out. And, uh, I appreciate it. And thanks for having me on, man. This was fun. Thank a Raj. Like I said, the pleasure is all mine. Like I said, you know, you've um, you've been my uh, sometimes if I'm 
in a really, really bad mood sometimes and some news will come on. I was like, oh, I'll just go right to the ink. And, you know, you've definitely okay. been there for, you know, especially for, for me, the wrestling fan, not the ring announcer, not the recording artist, not the podcast, but just me, the wrestling fan. You know, I've always gone to the ink and I've always supported your movement, you know, for so many years. And um, like I said, it's been an honor and, um, and a privilege to have you on, man. I'm looking forward to talking to you soon for sure. Absolutely. Thanks again. You got it. Well, that does it for this week's edition of the DLU podcast. I want to thank Raj for coming on to the show to discuss, you know, a very important matter regarding uh, the largest pro wrestling company in the world, WWE, but wishing WWE again all the best in this transitional period, whatever that might be, and all the success in the world. Again, you can follow me on social media, um, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, at the Real Lou. You can also Follow me on the old Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Derek T. Lewis official page. Get all of your official DTL merch at shop.derektlewis.com. And remember, no matter what you do in life, always remember to make it count. See you next time. They say plants like music. Yeah, no, like really, they, they respond to the vibrations of it, which means that this playlist you're listening to, the plants are too. You know what else plants like? Organic soil from miracle Grow. It's made with all the best stuff like wood fiber and compost. Plus, it's Omri certified organic, which officially means it's made with superior ingredients. And when you give your plants the stuff that makes them happy, they won't judge you on your iffy playlist. Hear that, plants? So go ahead and give them miracle Grow.